All right, so let's just read this for, for um, video sake. This says inverse transformation. This says the inverse of um, a transformation is that transformation that returns the image of a point or a plane shape to its original position. In other words, um, if a transformation moves the object to the image, the inverse of that transformation will move the image back to the object. Now, for reflection, the inverse transformation of any reflection is the reflection itself. So if I reflect um, a shape in the x-axis to get it to the image, to get it back to the object, I must, I must reflect it in the same x-axis again. So the inverse for reflection in the x-axis is reflection in the x-axis. Reflection in the x-axis took the object to the image, Reflection in the x-axis will take back the image back to the object. The inverse of all reflection is the reflection itself. If reflection in the y-axis took you somewhere to get back, you have to also reflect in the y-axis. If reflection in the line y is equal to x took you somewhere to get back to the, where you were, you have to again reflect in the in the um, line y is equal to x or the x-axis. Sorry, so if reflection in the line y is equal to x took you from object to image, to get back from image to object, you have to again reflect in the line y is equal to x. That is what this is saying. So the inverse transformation of all reflection is the same reflection. I think there's a sim it is a similar thing for um, rotation. So if, um, oh no, that's not true. If an anticlockwise rotation of 90 degrees took you from the object to the image, it is a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees that is going to take you back from the image to the object. All right? So if there are no objections, I think I want to turn the page. All right, and I think what we did here was to show that the inverse of reflection in the x-axis is still reflection in the x-axis. That's all that this is showing. Down here, all that this is showing is that the inverse of reflection in the x-axis is still reflection in the x-axis. That is what this is showing. So write it off, please before we go to the next page. We did the same thing up here to show you that the inverse of reflection in the x, in the x-axis is reflection in the x-axis. And down here to show you that the inverse of reflection in the line y is equal to x is reflection in the line y is equal to x. So the inverse of all reflections is the same reflection. All right. All right. So um, turning the page. All right. So this is the final page. And what we have on this page is we have um, the different types of rotation and the inverse. So the inverse of a clockwise rotation of, of 90 degrees, of an anticlockwise rotation of 90 degrees, is a clockwise rotation. So remember, positive means um, anticlockwise, and the negative means clockwise. So the inverse, so if turning 90 degrees to the left, because remember, you know, a rotation is simply a turn. And anticlockwise, let us say an anticlockwise anti rotation is a turn to the left. So if I turn 90 degrees to the left, to get back to where I was before, I must turn 90 degrees to the right. And turning to the right is a clockwise rotation. So the inverse of an anticlockwise rotation of 90 degrees is a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees. The inverse of a 180 degree rotation is simply a 180 degree rotation. All right, and the inverse of a 270 degree rotation anticlockwise 
is a clockwise rotation of 270 degrees. All right. And next thing that you guys can see is the idea of an equivalent rotation. Now, turning to the left 90 degrees is the same as turning 270 degrees to the right. Turning to the left 90 degrees will do the same thing as turning to the right 270 degrees. So an anticlockwise rotation of 90 degrees and a clockwise rotation of 270 degrees, they are called equivalent rotation. Ladies and gentlemen, turning either to the left or the right 180 degrees will carry to the same point. So the equivalent rotation of, a 90, of an anticlockwise rotation <clears throat> of 90 degrees, so in a sense, um, for a 180 degree rotation, you don't have to say left or right. Because whether you go left or right 180 degrees, you will end up at the same point. Lastly, an anticlockwise rotation of, of um, 270 degrees is equivalent to a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees. An anticlockwise rotation of 270 degrees is equivalent to a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees. One more time, please remember um, the transformation takes the object to the image and the inverse transformation takes the image back to the object. The only thing, um, ladies and gentlemen, we did not teach was the enlargement. The only thing that we did not teach was the enlargement. Let me see if I have space here. I have space. No, I'm just going to write this. We can always discuss it. And when we're doing future questions, we can look at it. Now, an enlargement of scale factor K um, and center the origin. is associated with the two by two matrix. All right, so this is something you can write, guys. I will also send it to you. It's going to be E, which stands for enlargement. Center the origin O and scale factor K, the matrix is K, zero, zero, K. This matrix represents an enlargement of a scale factor K and center the origin. And so, for example, um, let us say a point A, which is, let's say, one, two, under an enlargement E O2, which is an enlargement centered origin and scale factor K, that point would become, so we have what, 2, 0, 0, 2, where the 2 is the scale factor. We're applying this to the point A, which is 1, 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Zero times two is zero. Um, zero times one is zero. Two times two is four. So this point is going to become the point two, four. So under an enlargement, and this would be the point A prime. So A prime would be the point um, two, four. So under an enlargement of scale factor two and center the origin, the point A, which is one, two, would become the point A prime, which is two, 
for. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have just done are all the matrices that are associated with um, majority of the transformations that you will encounter in this topic. And largely, basically, this is the end of the topic. All that remains is that we need to practice applying this knowledge, applying the principle.